we're now ready to talk about one of the most famous events in all of world history that really was the trigger for World War I, or the Great War as it was called back then. So just as a little bit of backdrop, in 1908, the Austro-Hungarian Empire formally annexes formally annexes Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia and Herzegovina. It had already been occupying it since the late 1800s, since the Ottomans were being pushed out. But then in 1908, it formally annexes it. And just as a little bit more of backdrop, as the Ottomans were being pushed out of the Balkans, as the Ottomans were being pushed out of the Balkans, it helped rekindle or, or, or bring about more hope of forming or of unifying the Yugoslavic people, the, the southern Slavic people. When people talk about Yugoslav, Yugoslav, they're literally talking about the southern Slavs. So that literally means southern. So you had these nationalistic hopes, but now in 1908, it was already being occupied. A significant state that would be part of a potential future Yugoslav was now formally annexed by the Austro-Hungarians. Now you also had an independent kingdom of Serbia right here. And you could imagine that this was kind of the home base of the nationalistic movement. If only we could add, if only they could add the other southern Slavic states to this, it could one day turn into a greater Yugoslavia. So in that context, we get to 1914. And so let me draw a little line here. So we're getting to 1914, June 28th, which is one of the most famous dates in all of history. And you have the Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie. They're visiting Sarajevo, which is now it's an annexed, it's an annexed Bosnia. And when they are there, there is a ploy, there is a scheme to assassinate them from a group. They're called the Young Bosnians. They're, they're, they have ties to the Black Hand, which is kind of this, this, this nationalistic group uh, that has ties, many, many people say. I mean, all of these things are all very shady and behind the, back, behind the scenes. But it has, it has ties to elements in the kingdom of Serbia. They attempt to assassinate Archduke Franz Ferdinand. And it's actually a fascinating story because the initial assassination attempt is completely, completely botched. There's even one case of a guy, one of the guys who tried to be an assassin, when it gets botched, he tries to bite on a cyanide capsule and then jump into a river. The cyanide capsule had gone bad. The river was only 10 inches deep. And so they were able to get their hands on him. And one of the conspirators, Gavrilo Princip, at this point, once the whole thing was botched, he kind of gives up on the whole assassination attempt. And he's having literally a sandwich at a cafe in Sarajevo, uh, kind of thinking about um, how, how botched their whole attempt was. And while that was happening, a mistake on the part of those planning Archduke Franz Ferdinand's uh, 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 route as he was traveling within Sarajevo has them driving right near Gravilla Princip. So he sees all of a sudden that, they, that they've that they taken the wrong route, that they're driving right by him again. They, remember, his people already knew that there was an assassination attempt on him earlier in the day, so they were they should have been more careful. Now, Gavrila Princip gets up, puts his sandwich down, and starts walking over to where he sees Archduke Franz Ferdinand and Sophie's car going. Now, the drivers, once they realized that they had made a mistake, they had taken a, a less safe route, they try to back up, which makes things even worse because then the car starts stalling. And Gavrilo Princip literally walks up to the car and is able to shoot Archduke Franz Ferdinand and Sophie. And just to give you a sense of how important this is, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria is the heir. He's the he is the nephew of Franz Joseph, who is the who is who is the ruler of Austria-Hungary, and so he is the heir to the empire, and so he gets assassinated by Gavrilo Princip. So Ferdinand, Franz Ferdinand, Franz Ferdinand, Ferdinand, assassinated, assassinated by Gavrilo Princip, and we have right over here a picture right after Gavrilo Princip. I believe this is Gavrilo Princip right over here, right after he was arrested. And just to get a little sense of how this was tied to this whole Austro, this whole Yugoslavian nationalistic movement, this is what he said once he was arrested. I am a Yugoslav nationalist aiming for the unification of all Yugoslavs, and I do not care what form of state, but it must be free of Austria. 
So this act, this, this, this assassination, motivated by a nationalistic movement, motivated by a desire to maybe merge Bosnia and Herzegovina with Serbia and maybe eventually Croatia with Bosnia, Herzegovina and Serbia, this assassination, as we'll see in the next video, is the trigger for all of World War I. And the reason why it triggers it is because, well, there's many things you can cite. You could argue that many of the empires in, in Europe were already already militarizing, already had a desire for conflict, but then you also had all of these alliances that essentially allowed the dominoes to fall in all of Europe, and because they had these empires, essentially much of the world to be at war with each other.